Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And we've got a wine from Germany here. Something I don't think I've ever had. Uh, if I had, I don't think I've ever reviewed it. This is, um, I'm sorry, this is a Dornfelder. So the uh, label is the Wilhelm Bergmann Dornfelder, a medium sweet red wine. Uh, this is from the Rhein Hessen, a 2009 vintage. Bought it for $13.99 at Central Market. Um, yeah, we're kind of the Central Market kick. I bought a few of these wines really actually back in April when I got off probation. I just kind of never got to hit these wines up. Um, it's They're made by the uh, Weidenhaus Ernst Bretz um, Winery and they're in the Rheinhessen. The Rheinhessen is um, where the Rhine makes this like like curve, well, actually as far as Europe, the curve and it comes down. Um, it's where Wiesbaden is, where there's, this winery is located uh, it's kind of like in the middle of the Rhine has in this actually a uh, river called the Cells, and uh, it's in that area called um, it's like Bechtelsheim. Okay, so uh, let's try it out. Dornfelder is a uh, grape that was created. And we're gonna go, we're gonna consult the book of knowledge here. Um, make sure I get back to. Dang it! I had cleared myself out of it. Here we go. Uh, let's consult the book of knowledge again. Uh, Dornfelder, it was a uh, grape that was created in Germany. Uh, it's not one of those grapes that's been around for a long, long time. Uh, it was created in uh, 1955 by a gentleman named uh, August Harold, and he used two grapes. He uh, he he you know combined two grapes. One was called the uh, the Helfsen the Helfensteiner and the Herald Rebbe, which, you know, the second one was named after him. Those two grapes um, were actually created from other grapes. So the Helfensteiner was created, was created from combining uh, Fruburgunder and Trollinger, uh, and then the Herald, the Herald Rebbe was uh, created with Blau Portugieser and Lember, Lemberger, okay. These are German names for some for some for some other grapes. Uh, uh, Blauer Portugieser is uh, 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 Pinot Gris. Let's see. I consulted this now. This one is also called. Oh, it's just called Portugieser. Um, yeah, it's a red grape. It wouldn't be called Pinot Gris. Uh, Lemberger is probably known as Lemberger. Yeah. And these are just some German varietals that I'm, I'm not a huge... The Portuguese was the only one that I actually really had recognized when I looked at it. Uh, Trollinger is also known as uh, Schiava. Uh, I guess from Italy, and then the Fruburgunder is Fruburgunder. <laughs> so yeah, it's a uh, Pinot Noir Precoce, or is it called Precoce? Right? Fruburgunder. A mutation of Pinot Noir. So these are you know other varietals that were crossbred or hybrid, or whatever, and then create two grapes, and those 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 two grapes created. Dornfelder. Now, the thing about Dornfelder is, is now the second most planted grape in Germany. Um, and from what, I, from what I can see, it looks like they do create a lot of sweet red wines with it. Um, so, let's uh, check it out. Let me know how I am with sweet reds. We'll see if I like it or not. Alright, right off the bat on the bouquet, I would never know this was a sweet... 
a sweet wine, or they're, they're calling it a medium sweet wine. It's pretty much devoid of fruit on the nose. It's more minerality, and it's just a generalization. There's nothing specific that I can give you. Let's see if anyone else watch. Nope, nobody's watching, just me. I mean, it is kind of late. It's almost 10 o'clock Central Time, so. Yeah, just really nothing on the nose. I did start it, right? I think I did. Yeah, I did. Let's see how it tastes. Well, it's not it's not bad as far as the sweetness level. I mean, if this is kind of what I wish Texas wines would do, if they're gonna have a sweet red wine, it would be like this sweetness level. It's not sugary sweet, so it's not too bad. It's kind of raspberry like. Maybe a little bit of spice to it. Um, it's it's not bad. It's not a prefer. It's not a, it's not a wine that I would probably seek out. I mean, I'll finish drinking the bottle, but it's not a wine that if I see it again, I'm gonna go out and get. At least not this one specifically. Oh, hold on, a little funk there. No, uh, maybe it was just a passing with that. You know, it's, it's got a tad of sweetness to it, so you got that going for it. Got a little bit of raspberry, and there's a little bit of minerality to it. It's, it's again, it's not a bad wine. I would probably score it in a range of, or around, um, probably 85, actually. Um, if you like something that's a little bit slightly sweet, that, you know what? This is something where I would actually suggest this would be a wine for someone that's wanting to get into some reds, but doesn't want the really, really dry red wine stuff. So, again, it's not my preference, but it's not a bad wine. And if you are looking for something that uh, you might want to check out that's a red wine, that's not really, really dry, that might be a little bit off the beaten path, it's got a little bit of sweetness to it, it's easy to drink. I'm getting more and more of that kind of greenness to it. So I'm starting to like it a little bit better, but still an 85. Um, I can see recommending this wine to some people now. I mean, as I'm drinking it, it's opening up a little more. I can see recommending it um, to people that are like, what should I drink with a red? Again, it's a little bit unusual, I think. Uh, it's not, your, not what your, your American palates are used to, I think. Um, but it's not bad. And I'd be comfortable suggesting it more to a novice wine drinker than someone that's like looking for the next big thing. Um, we'll get that a little bit closer for the camera over there, for the label, like that. So, I mean, it's not bad, but you know, honestly, for $14, that would lead me to not necessarily just recommend it willy-nilly to people. So... Take it for what you will. It's not a horrible wine. It's not a great wine. It's something that if you've never had a Dornfelder before, like me, um, you're at least experiencing it. And it's got some interesting things to it. But yeah, again, 85, only just because it's got a little bit of sweetness, and I think some people might like it. All right, that's going to do it for this show. Um, as always, visit the website if you're not already on it. Uh, click any of the links. Um, there won't really... No, actually, I will have a link for this particular uh, winery. Uh, below. Uh, they don't really go into too much depth um, as far as the wine itself. You can read about their history. Um, 
And then, uh, again, you know, if there's anything that catches your eye on the ads, you can check them out. Uh, or if you want to donate, uh, there's a donate button over here. Uh, you can donate whatever you want. And that's going to do it. We'll see you again next time.